asparagus veins often has an inherited factor, but remember that genetics loads the gun, lifestyle pulls the trigger. It's an interesting study of today. It's called epigenetics, the effect of lifestyle on the cell. So if someone has inherited varicose veins, there is a few things they can do to manage it. If someone's carrying excess weight, that can certainly intensify the veins. Constipation, that excess weight on the lower legs can compound the problem. All right, let's get real. Those annoying bulging varicose veins can be a total confidence killer, right? They're one of those things that creep up on us and suddenly there they are, making our legs look all veiny and swollen. And here is the frustrating part. Most people are told that they either have to deal with it or go through pricey, uncomfortable medical procedures. But what if there is a better way? A natural way? Barbara O'Neill, who's all about holistic healing, has some incredible tips to share. Forget about costly treatments. Imagine being able to improve your veins just by making a few changes at home. Barbara's methods are all about natural, easy solutions. Things you might already have in your kitchen or could do without any fancy equipment. We are talking about simple lifestyle tweaks, foods that boost vein health, and even some clever natural remedies to reduce those pesky veins. So, here is the big question. Could a few easy lifestyle changes actually help you say goodbye to varicose veins? And what are these secrets that mainstream medicine rarely talks about? You're about to find out. Stay tuned because we're about to dive into some practical, powerful tips that can make a real difference in your vein health. Ready? Let's get started. And what happens with varicose veins is the blood's tending to sit and pool in the, in the ve venous system. You see your arteries come away from the heart, the venous system is coming back to the heart. All right, so let's talk about what's really going on with varicose veins. Have you ever wondered why these veins suddenly decide to pop out, looking all twisted and bumpy? Here is the simple truth. Varicose veins happen when our veins struggle to do their job right, which is getting blood back up to the heart. Think of your veins as one-way highways, moving blood from your legs to your heart. Inside these veins, there are tiny valves that open and close to keep the blood moving in the right direction. But sometimes, these valves get weak, damaged or tired. When that happens, blood pools in certain areas instead of flowing smoothly. The result? Veins that stretch, twist and bulge. Hello, varicose veins. So why does this happen? A few big culprits are usually at play here. Genetics is a big one. If varicose veins run in your family, there is a good chance you might get them too. Then there's our lifestyle. If you spend a lot of time on your feet or sitting at a desk, that can put extra pressure on your veins. And age? It is another big factor. The older we get, the more our veins start to wear out. Hormonal changes, weight gain, and even wearing tight clothing can also make varicose veins more likely to show up. Now that we have uncovered what's behind these veins, let's jump into how to actually handle them using easy, natural remedies. Trust me, you are going to love these tips. Let's talk about an underrated trick for varicose veins moving those calf muscles. Barbara O'Neill, the natural health guru, swears by this. Did you know you have a second heart? It's your calf muscle. Do you ever wonder how the blood gets back to the heart? You see, your arterial system is the blood coming away from the heart and your venous system is the blood coming back to the heart. It is your calf muscles. And I think you'll agree with me when you've been on the rebounder, those calf muscles, they're constantly working. So your second heart is getting those blood back. That's why rebounding is so effective for varicose veins. You don't get, you don't get varicose arteries, do you? You get varicose veins. It's that venous system that's affected. And that's why in the plane, they tell you to, to move your foot, don't you? Because when you move your foot, you're, you're moving your calf muscle. She calls the calves your second heart. Why? Because these muscles play a huge role in keeping blood moving up from your legs and back toward your heart. When you flex those calves, you're actually giving your veins a boost and preventing blood from pooling and causing varicose veins. Now, Barbara has a unique exercise in mind for this. Bouncing. Yes, bouncing. She recommends bouncing on a mini trampoline. 
This simple up and down motion does wonders for your calves and gets your blood pumping. Think of it as a mini workout for your veins. Barbara suggests starting small. Aim for 100 bounces at first. It might sound like a lot, but you can always break it down into smaller sets, like 20 or 25 bounces at a time, especially if you are new to this. As your legs get stronger, you can slowly increase the number. Bouncing regularly gives your blood flow a major boost, making it easier for your veins to do their job. Plus, it is a quick, low impact way to get your circulation going without breaking a sweat. What's happening here is simple but powerful. Every bounce sends a little squeeze through your calves, pushing blood upward and preventing it from pooling in your legs. This not only helps reduce varicose veins, but also strengthens the capillaries and veins in your legs, keeping them healthier in the long run. Now, let's talk about food. It might seem like a small piece of the puzzle, but trust me, it plays a major role in vein health. Let's get into it. Varicose veins usually has an inherited factor, but remember, genetics loads the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. So what can we do for varicose veins? Well, there are a few things that will compound or make varicose veins far worse. And one is if you're carrying extra weight. So if you're carrying extra weight, one of the easiest ways to lose weight is to eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen, or supper like a pauper, it's to start exercising every day, balance the hormones with the Anna's Wild Yam Cream, go to bed early. If you stay up late, you're going to get hungry. That's one of the easiest ways to lose weight and get the carbohydrates right down. Eat a lot more fiber, much less carbohydrates. First things first, if you are carrying a little extra weight that can put added pressure on your veins, making varicose veins worse. Barbara's solution? Shift your meal timing. Try making breakfast and lunch your main meals of the day and keep dinner light. By doing this, your body isn't weighed down by a big meal at night, and it can focus on burning fat while you sleep. This simple shift can support weight loss without needing a drastic diet. That's one of the easiest ways to lose weight and get the carbohydrates right down. Eat a lot more fiber, much less carbohydrates. Now let's talk about carbs and fiber. Barbara recommends a low carb, high fiber approach. Here is why. Too many carbs, especially processed ones, lead to blood sugar spikes. These spikes can cause your body to store more fat, which is not helpful if you are trying to reduce pressure on your veins. Instead, focus on plant-based foods, protein-rich options, and fiber-packed choices like legumes, nuts, and seeds. Legumes, like beans and lentils, have moderate carbs, but are also loaded with fiber, which is super important for digestion and blood sugar control. Nuts and seeds are even lower in carbs and bring in those healthy fats our veins love. Taking cayenne pepper by mouth can also help because cayenne pepper thins the blood. Cayenne pepper also opens the capillaries. Cayenne pepper strengthens the arterial and the venous walls. So that person might start with a quarter of a teaspoon in a little water with each meal three times a day, and they could build up to half a teaspoon three times a day. So there are some simple things that you can do to help manage varicose veins. And if you are up for it, give cayenne pepper a try. Barbara suggests starting with just a pinch, a quarter teaspoon in a bit of water. Cayenne pepper has amazing benefits for circulation, helping to thin the blood and strengthen vein walls. Plus, it's a great digestion booster, which is always a plus. Now let's clear up a common myth. Healthy fats are not your enemy. Many people think cutting fat will help with weight loss, but that's not entirely true. According to Barbara, it's high carbs and sugars that pack on the pounds, not the healthy fats found in foods like avocados, nuts, and seeds. So, don't be afraid to include these in your diet. The goal is balance, making sure each meal has protein, healthy fats, and fiber, so you feel full and energized without those blood sugar spikes. With these simple dietary adjustments, you are not only giving your veins a break, but also helping your whole body function better. Can you use natural mixtures to ease those veins? Absolutely. Barbara suggests using a mix of cloves, garlic, and olive oil for topical relief. These ingredients support vein health and reduce discomfort. Just massage it gently, but always do a patch test to check for any sensitivities. But there is a herb called witch hazel. And you can buy witch hazel in a cream and it basically shrinks up little the blood vessels. So rubbing that on the legs can also help. 
Okay, now let's talk about Witch Hazel. This stuff is a total game changer for your veins. You might have heard of it as a skin toner, but trust me, it does so much more. Barbara O'Neill is a huge fan of Witch Hazel for varicose veins, and here is why. It helps tighten and constrict blood vessels. Yeah, you heard that right. Witch Hazel has this amazing ability to pull those veins back in, reducing swelling and even easing pain. Think of it like a natural band-aid for your veins. When you apply it as a cream or ointment to your legs, it instantly eases the heaviness and pain that often come with varicose veins. Imagine putting your feet up after a long day, rubbing some witch hazel on those tired, swollen legs, and feeling that instant relief. Ah, the magic of nature at work. All right, let's talk about something so simple yet overlooked, hydration. Sure, you have heard a thousand times that staying hydrated is important, but what if I told you that simply guzzling down water might not be doing as much as you think for those varicose veins? According to Barbara O'Neill, there is a bit of a trick to it, one that can seriously change the game when it comes to circulation and vein health. Magnesium will pull the water inside the cell, and that's why a crystal of whole salt on your tongue before every glass of water, it gets the water into the cells, the quickest way to hydrate a body. Now, we do lose two liters, sometimes two and a half liters a day. Barbara O'Neill explains that our bodies actually need more than plain water to stay hydrated at the cellular level. When we are just drinking water without any minerals, a lot of it is not even absorbed properly. It just passes right through us. To make sure your body is really absorbing that water, she recommends adding a pinch of natural salt, like Himalayan or Celtic salt, to each glass of water. This tiny step makes a huge difference because the minerals in natural salts help water penetrate your cells, keeping your blood thin and flowing smoothly. The natural salt helps balance the electrolytes, so instead of thickening up, your blood stays thinner and easier to circulate. This keeps it moving swiftly through your veins, reducing the pooling that often leads to those visible, painful varicose veins. It is all about making sure that blood flow stays nice and easy, like a free-flowing river, rather than clogging up and adding pressure on your veins. So, each time you fill up a glass, just add a tiny crystal of salt. Not enough to taste it, just enough to give your body that mineral support. It is such a tiny tweak, but over time, it can work wonders. It prevents your blood from thickening up, which means less strain on your veins and a lower risk of those bulging, uncomfortable varicose veins forming or worsening. Plus, staying hydrated with this mineral-boosted water doesn't just help your veins, it gives you more energy, better skin, and even helps with digestion. So, you are not only giving your veins a break, but you're boosting your overall health in a big way. Imagine if you could make a few simple changes in your daily life to actually help those veins. Barbara O'Neill suggests that by simply paying a bit more attention to how we treat our legs, we can make a difference. Let's take a deeper look at what she says. Farragut's veins have an inherited factor, so obviously there are none in my family. Yes, that's a bit inherited. Yes, that's a bit because I run up and down hills every morning. Yes, that's a bit because I don't have excess weight. So there's an inherited factor. There's standing on your feet all day. That doesn't help. Carrying excess weight is another factor. Bad foot wear. I only ever let the bottom of my feet touch natural fibre. So I'm on suede and cork here at the moment. If I've got shoes on, I always have cotton or woolen socks. So that's a factor. Constipation is a factor. First, it all starts with the shoes. Think about it. Our feet and legs are literally our foundation, carrying us around all day. So what we put on them really matters. O'Neill emphasizes the importance of wearing comfortable shoes, especially if you are standing or moving around a lot. She's a big advocate for natural fibers, like leather, because they allow your feet to breathe and reduce unnecessary pressure. When you wear uncomfortable shoes or stand for hours, you're making your veins work overtime. And if you love running, be careful. Heel striking can create a jarring impact on your veins. Instead, she recommends running on your toes or finding more vein-friendly exercises to give those veins a break. Speaking of exercises, Barbara O'Neill has a lot to say about that too. Dr. Kellogg, he said three intakes of food a day should equal three evacuations a day. Now, the best exercise for people with varicose veins is not running because of the jarring on the legs. It's swimming or rebounding or exercise bike. She is not anti-exercise at all. She actually encourages it, but in a way that supports vein health. Rebounding is one of her favorites because it's low impact, 
and gets the blood pumping without pounding your veins. Swimming is another great option because it supports your body and takes pressure off the legs. And for those who aren't swimmers or don't have access to a pool, a stationary bike works wonders too. These types of activities engage the calf muscles without putting strain on the veins, which is key to improving blood flow and preventing the pooling that can make varicose veins worse. When you're conquering your varicose veins, is elevate the legs even for 15 minutes a day, put them way up. So maybe in the afternoon, sit down, get a good book, or if you might be a knitter, I'm a knitter, and elevate those legs up and get that, get the blood coming more back into other parts of the body. It will take pressure off the legs. Another thing O'Neill highlights that may surprise you is the importance of simply elevating your legs. Imagine lying back for 15 minutes resting your legs up on some pillows or a couch arm. It's as simple as that, but it gives your veins a break. Gravity works against us all day, especially for those who stand or sit for long periods, causing blood to gather in the legs. By propping up your legs daily, you're allowing that blood to flow back toward the heart, which can reduce swelling and relieve pressure. It's like giving your veins a little vacation from the constant push and pull of gravity. There is also a hormone connection here. For many, hormonal imbalances can affect circulation. And Barbara O'Neill suggests using something like Anna's Wild Yam Cream to balance things out. When your hormones are out of balance, they can make circulation problems worse. Balancing them can improve your vein health and might even ease some of the pain and swelling associated with varicose veins. If you got varicose veins and that's your job, you... Sorry, you've got to get another job because you will never completely conquer your problem if you're going to be on your feet for long periods of time. So that's the good news. The body has the ability to heal itself, and when you give your body the right conditions, even varicose veins can be managed. For those of you with jobs that demand long hours on your feet, Barbara offers a candid suggestion. Consider whether there's a way to reduce standing time, or if possible, even switch roles if it's taking too big a toll on your legs. It's not easy, but if you're already struggling with vein issues, it could be a change worth thinking about. The beauty of these lifestyle modifications is that they don't require major upheavals. They're small, steady changes, like slipping into a comfortable pair of shoes, choosing exercises that love your veins as much as you do, propping up your legs for a few minutes each day, and maybe even making a few adjustments to your work setup. All of these little shifts build up over time, creating an environment that encourages vein health, boosts circulation, and eases the discomfort that often comes with varicose veins. Can a little external support help? Yes, it can. Compression stockings gently press your legs, which keeps blood from pooling and encourages it to flow back toward the heart. This is especially helpful if you are standing or sitting for long periods. Every day, gravity pulls on everything, including your blood forcing it to work hard to get back up from your legs to your heart. For people with healthy veins, it is no big deal. But if you have varicose veins, your veins need a little help. Here is where compression stockings come in. These special stockings give your veins a gentle squeeze from the ankles upward, like a steady push to keep blood moving instead of letting it pool in the lower legs. It is like an invisible force that's constantly helping your blood stay on the move. And it's not just about squeezing, it's about smart pressure applied in the right way. At the ankle, they're snug, but as they go up your leg, they gradually loosen, setting up the perfect gradient to encourage blood flow in the right direction. What's great about compression stockings is that they work all day with almost no effort from you. If you're sitting at a desk or on your feet all day, especially if your job keeps you standing in one spot, these stockings can make a huge difference. That achy, heavy feeling you often get after a long day? Compression stockings help maintain steady circulation, reducing the chance of your legs feeling heavy and tired by the time you get home. Barbara O'Neill talks about how useful these are, especially if you're in situations where you can't move much. Long flights, car rides, or even standing in line for hours? That's when blood tends to stagnate in the lower legs, which can worsen vein problems. Compression stockings act as a support system for your veins, promoting circulation and easing the strain on tired veins, even when you are sitting still. Now that you have all these natural remedies in your back pocket, it's time to start thinking about which one you are going to try first. 
It could be the little things like adding cayenne pepper to your meals or doing those calf exercises. Maybe it's upping your water game with a pinch of salt for better absorption. No matter what, these simple changes can make a huge difference for your veins. So, which one will you try out? Maybe you have already tried a few or have your own tips that work wonders. Share them with us. I would love to hear your thoughts, experiences, and what's worked for you, so don't be shy. Drop a comment below. And hey, if you want to keep learning about natural ways to stay healthy, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all the awesome tips we have coming your way. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Stay healthy and take care of those veins.